in for a, an unpleasant surprise. If we go with some kind of arrogance thinking, just stroll into Brentford and just take the and just Jesus, Martinelli, uh, Saka. We just be having a few day. I don't think it's going to be as easy as that. Even though I think we have the squad and the first eleven to actually go to Brentford and get it an emphatic victory and play very well, but the opposition posed by Brentford will, will be stench. Trust me, they are not that same. You can, you can just go there and just roll them over. Let's not forget last season. Even though there are circumstances that led to that defeat, I don't, I'm not here to make excuses because somebody will say, Oh, he's making excuses. No, I'm not saying I'm not here to make excuses. We know there was COVID, players injured, all sorts of shenanigans was going on with Arsenal score last season. Yes, let's give Brentford their kudos and their flowers. They bullied us and they had, an, they had a good victory 2 0, the beat us at the GTA Stadium 2 0 last season. I'm giving it to them. But this time we are coming with a very it's a we are much improved team, in my opinion, with a better team, better attack, better defense. Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. If you're new and you enjoy the content, make sure you stick a like to the video. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content again, and make sure you turn on post notifications. So when I drop this videos, you can be alerted. Your post notification is very important. Then sticking a like to the video for the algorithm is very important. And do not forget to subscribe if you enjoy the content. So I'm going to be doing the preview to the Brentford versus Arsenal at the G-Tech Stadium on Sunday. That should be, be a very, very interesting game. We know for the for one week now, two weeks technically, we've not had any English Premiership game due to the passing away and the yeah, I'll say transition of the Queen. Uh, our condolences still remain to, to, to the Queen and the family and the necessary gestures regarding the barrier and everything that is going on in England. Like I said, my condolences to them, even though I do not agree with the way they've gone about postponement of these games and adding to the fixture congestion, but I understand the tradition of individual countries and you have to just respect them. You might not agree, but you have to respect your culture and your traditions thereof in England. Like I said, even though the fixture congestion is going to look crazy, we know there's a World Cup this year already. We know how congested the fixture is. How are these teams going to give us the best spectacle when the fixture is going to be congested? Players are going to be very tired. And that leads to another part of vulnerability to, to injury. So I, I don't know if we can get through all these fixtures, but let's wait and see. So let's take on the topic, Brentford against Arsenal at the GTEC Stadium. That should be a very interesting match. We know uh, the last time Arsenal played, we lost, unfortunately, to Manchester United. That was very painful to me. You now I was thinking we could make it six out of six. Unfortunately, every good run sometimes has come to a halt. And it hurts me that Manchester United was a team to halt our, our fantastic run. But it is what it is. Uh, thank God we had a Europa League game last week. And we actually had a decent uh, victory, which makes sure that the, the defeat is out of the system. For me, it's key to get your yeah, defeat out of the system. So let's say I'm going to react in English Premiership. We know Brentford are very, I, I, the same thing. I understand the star player is uh, Ivan Tony. And shout out to him for making the English uh, English squad. This, I think this is his first time making the English squad. Uh, shout out to him. I think his form this season has been fantastic. Yeah, I think he has, uh, let me look at, he has five goals. That's decent out of six matches, five goals. That's a good return for someone like Ivan Tony, We know the likes of Mwepo is there, but we know Ivan Tony is their main threat. We know they have a decent defense. We don't have any style names in defense, but they have a decent midfield, but we know their star player uh, is Ivan Tony, And they have a very good coach, in my opinion. The Danish man, I've forgotten his name right now. He's a very, very good coach. And he, I would like to put this. Even though they are among some people's uh, uh, shortlist for relegation, which I disagree with strongly. I don't think Brentford will be relegated. I think you have a decent team, you have a good squad to actually uh, stand the test of this season and actually remain uh, a consistent fixture for now in English Premiership. But they are doing well. They are doing well. They are not, they are not the most expansive team or they are not the most defensive team. They have a healthy balance of offensive and attack, attacking football, which is good. They don't play ultra defensive. They don't play uh, ultra attacking. We know they were actually taking some scalp this season. They beat Manchester United, scoring four goals. They've had a few good results this season. So shout out to them. If Arsenal, I think they go just go to the GTEC Stadium and just for Brentford to roll over, I think we'll be 
in for an unpleasant surprise. If we go with some kind of arrogance thinking, just stroll into Brentford and just take the and just Jesus, Martinelli, uh, Saka, we just be having a few day. I don't think it's going to be as easy as that. Even though I think we have the squad and the first eleven to actually go to Brentford and get a, an emphatic victory and play very well, but the opposition posed by Brentford will, will be stench. Trust me, they are not that team. You can, you can just go there and just roll them over. Let's not forget last season, even though there are circumstances that led to that defeat. I don't, I'm not here to make excuses because somebody will say, oh, he's making excuses. No, I'm not saying I'm not here to make excuses. We know there was COVID, players injured, all sorts of shenanigans was going on with Arsenal squad last season. Yes, let's give Brentford their kudos and their flowers. They bullied us and they had an, they had a good victory 2-0 the beat us at the GTA Stadium 2-0 last season. I'm giving it to them. But this time we are coming with a very it's a, we are in, much improved team, in my opinion, with a better team, better attack, better defense, better goalkeeper. So it's looking good. I know last season uh it was Leno that was keeping uh Ben White was, was Ben White's debut, even though he struggled. Ben White has grown in leaps and bound, even though unfortunately he wasn't listed. Today in the English uh, squad, I'll do a video regarding that later. But Ben White, the, uh, since that game, Ben White has improved. Whether you like it or not, the we have to be objective, right? Regardless of how you feel about Soliba, I understand people tend to pan to the new toy and forget about the old toy, which is ridiculous. Ben White actually improved our defense last season. I understand some of our certain attachment to Soliba because of our. Uh, is French, maybe because of his French, or because we're in a haste to see what is made of after we bought him about three years ago, but we loaned him out. I understand that, that sentiment, I understand that fact, but let's not forget that Ben White has been playing in England for two seasons, playing the top flight for two, two or three seasons now. We bought him after he had his first season in the top flight, and I think the other season he had with Leeds was in the championship, then he came a season after. To, uh, back to Brentford, he was on loan and he had a season and we saw him and he came and he improved our defence. Yes, he struggled against Brentford in the first game, but since then, he has been, his, his performances have been fantastic, in my opinion. Yes, there is no perfect performance all the time, but Ben White will give you a steady eight. Now, let's say a range between seven and eight steadily all the time he plays. He's comfortable on the ball, he's quick, he tackles well, like, give it, come on, I understand Soliba is a new shiny toy. Let's not just throw away Ben White. So, like I said, we are coming with a, a much improved defense. Uh, we are coming with a much uh, improved uh, midfield. Shout out the fact that Pate is back. He has been training. So, I'm expecting Pate to start, but Arteta might decide to stick with Sambi. Like I said, I am not comfortable with Sambi. I'm not saying Sambi is a terrible player, but for right now, we saw him a game against Manchester United. He, he didn't play a bad game. But he didn't give us anything special. He didn't improve us. He was just he was just there. There was nothing flamboyant. I understand. But he didn't add anything to the to the team. In my opinion, he was just there as a steady AD. But we need more than a steady AD when you play certain games, right? So I'm expecting Patrick to be back. He has been. He came back to training last week, so he has had more than a week's training. So he should be fully fit for this game. I'm expecting that. But we will hear more from Arteta tomorrow during the the pre-match uh, press conference. So we'll hear more about that. Aside from that, there is no injury news that is apparent. So let's check right now, even though we still get an update tomorrow from the uh, the pre-match press conference. If we look at what we have right now, uh, Mohamed Eni is a long-time injury. Uh, is out for a long term, so we don't expect Eni to be fit. Pate uh, is back in training, so I expect him to be in the match day squad, if, at least. At least, if it doesn't start, it should be in the match day squad. Nelson, I think, is back in training. Smithrow, we don't know uh, the latest on Smithrow's injury. We know they pulled up after the Manchester United game two weeks ago uh, during the warm-up training after the match. So we don't know. Hopefully, we get an update from Arteta tomorrow. So watch out. I, th I think I should be able to do a presser, a short presser uh, about the pre-match press conference from Arteta tomorrow. So let's look at the Brentford side. Uh, Sergio Canos is out with an armstring. Ethan Pinnock is out. Christian Nogard is out. So, but tomorrow we'll find out more whether those players are still out or not from the Brentford uh, pre-match press conference. So sticking to the Brentford against Arsenal, 
like I said, I'm expecting us not to go to the G Tech and get a victory. I think we have the first 11 that can do the job or the school that can do the job. I think we have better attackers, better midfielders, and better defensive units compared to Brentford. Yes, Brentford will they'll give us a game. They are going to give us a game. They're a good team. They're a decent team. I just think we're just a better team. So I'm expecting three points. Nothing short of three points. I understand we lost against Manchester United. We had a good momentum. We won our first five, then we lost the sixth, which happens. This is time to continue to move up and gather the points that is needed for at least, at least a top four this season. We cannot go uh, beneath top four. We just have to. We just have to consolidate on the growth and the progress we've, we've gathered from last season. We, we added Jesus to our attack. We added Zinchenko. So I added Fabio Vieira, which we are yet to see, in the, uh, see uh, him in an extended period of time. So uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic about this season. So sticking on the Brentford game, like I said, I think we can win this match. Guys, what do you think? Give me a legal predictions in the comment section. Do you think we can get three points or if you disagree? Leave the comment section. I'm practically predicting a 3-1 victory at the GTEC Stadium. I think Arsenal can go there and do the job. Uh, except we are in injuries, we are not aware as of today, Thursday evening that I'm recording this video. There is no news on any injuries from the Arsenal camp. And the only injury update we have is positive one regarding Thomas Party, who returned to training last week Friday. So I'm hoping everything goes fine. Even when they, are, when they do their last training tomorrow, hopefully there are no new injury scares or anything and we can go to Brentford and actually have a fantastic game. When the game conv convincingly add more goals, we need to add goals to our, to our performance. And we know... Ivan Tony will be a ton in the flesh, but I'm 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 very very confident that I, I'll say no fool. I'm confident that Soliba and Gabriel Magalhães can deal with the threat of Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony will be a handful. You cannot take it away from him. He will be a handful. He's buzzing from the confidence that he has been he actually been called to the England English squad. He will want to consolidate that by a goal. So we have to make sure. We stop him from getting any goal or getting celebrations tomorrow. It's very, very important we stop Ivan Tony and Webu. But Ivan Tony is the main threat. So we have to be very physical tomorrow. We know it might be a physical game. So we have to be up to the test. Like I said, I'm insisting and I'm predicting Asna winning at the GTEC Stadium, three goals to one. Leave your predictions in the comment section. And if you disagree with some of my pretty much uh, 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 observations, leave a respect in the comment section and I'll, I'll respond to them objectively as much as I can. Guys, do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Stick a like for your greeting. It's very important to stick a like on the video and turn on your post notification bell so when I post these videos, you can be alerted and I'll see you guys on the next one.